what's up everyone so it's officially march which means that it is officially endometriosis awareness month so i wanted to make another video first to just start off by saying thank you to everyone who's reached out to me about my previous video where i talked about my endometriosis journey people that i haven't spoken to in years and people that i worked with that really had no clue at all that i had been going through what i've been going through for as long as i've been going through it so yeah i want to start off by saying thank you to everyone for that it's really means a lot to me that people watched and that people reached out to let me know that they watched and i've also just had like random people that i don't know reach out and actually like thank me for speaking on this issue it really means a lot to me because i'm not someone that's really vulnerable i'm actually like really private and don't like to tell people my business except for the ones that know me they'd be knowing too much it just made me feel like i really did go through this for a reason so that i could share my story and continue to share my story and talk about it and hopefully continue to reach more and more people and hopefully push people to advocate for themselves and keep on looking for doctors and doing research and there is so many people that told me that they didn't even know what endometriosis was which i'm not shocked by because i get that nearly all the time so i just want to start out by saying thank you so this video i wanted to talk more about mental health and the effects that endometriosis had on my mental health because i feel like black and people of color mental health is still not something that's really talked about enough either or there's just such a stigma when it comes to mental health and seeking help like i had said before in the previous video some of the symptoms that i experienced that had an effect on my mental health were anxiety depression extreme fatigue food intolerances weight gain oh painful intercourse so people that know me or that have seen me i'm only five feet tall so i am kind of a small person but <laughs> i am someone that has always struggled with my weight your girl she, she thickums i was put on my first diet at 12 years old or i think i was even younger my doctor told my mom that she had to put me on a diet because I was overweight. So I'm also an emotional eater. I always wish that I was one of those people that like when I'm going through something that I didn't eat, but I'm like the complete opposite and I will eat you out of house and home. <laughs> so that is something that I've struggled with since I was a child. Now let's add on the crazy amount of inflammation that endometriosis causes and we got a problem so having endometriosis has affected my self-esteem and my confidence in so many ways and i think starting off with my weight as i've gotten older I, my body has changed and I just realized that like, I had so many food intolerances like, to the point where I could not eat anything dairy without my stomach being in shambles. And I remember when I went to go see my OBGYN last year and she told me that I had fibroids, she was like, okay, so stay away from caffeine, which is my little, I'm a coffee girl. I've been drinking coffee since I was a kid. like." I'm Puerto Rican. We drink coffee as kids. Yeah, no caffeine, no dairy. I am a cheese girl. I love cheese so much. So that was really hard for me. And then also no red meat. So I had cut out red meat a long time ago. I know that red meat causes a lot of inflammation. I'm not someone that's like crazy about red meat anyways, but I really love a good burger. Not being able to eat those three things 
I just felt like I was so limited. And then I went to go see my primary care doctor and I told her, you know, I, I have fibroids. GYN told me no more dairy, no more caffeine, no more red meat. And I was sticking to it. I was doing a pretty good job. And my doctor was like, okay, let's add one more thing to the list. No gluten. I'm like, so what can I eat? I was like genuinely like distraught because I love food. I really, really do love food. And I'm like, what can I, what can I eat for real? And I, I mean, I have changed my diet. Like, I'm going to be honest, like I've gone fake vegan on and off, vegetarian on and off, but it's, it's a, it's a struggle for me. It's something that I work, that I have to work on like every single day. That was a big reason also why I felt like it was time for me to like go see a specialist because I'm like okay so on top of everything else that's going on now I can't even eat the things that I enjoy and that's really upsetting if you go online you can look up endometriosis diet there's things that I can't eat that I really do love but like overall like it's like all the things that I really love I wasn't able to eat anymore and that was really hard for me but I did notice a difference in the inflammation the hardest thing for me was that even though I was seeing results, I could never get my body exactly to like where I wanted it to be. And it's really discouraging to the point where I completely disappeared off of social media. I didn't want people to see me and judge me and be like, girl, what happened to her? I was worried about what everybody else was thinking. And just because I wasn't comfortable in my own body, like it actually really held me back from doing a lot of things that I wanted to do. like my music and i need to be able to post on social media and i didn't want to because i didn't want people to see me because i didn't like the way that i looked i didn't like the way that i felt like my self-esteem was at an all-time low for i want to say mm, a good like seven years and that's a lot because I, I feel like growing up even though i was always like kind of struggling with my weight I was always super confident in who I was and to lose that, it was hard for me. And maybe it sounds like superficial or whatever because at the end of the day, I still like am who I am on the inside. But if you don't feel good on the outside, it's gonna have an effect on, on the inside. It, it really takes a toll on your mental as well. I just didn't feel right inside. And I knew that I had a lot of work to do on the inside before I was able to like really put myself out there. So I am the biggest advocate for therapy. I've had like three or four different therapists. I've been on and off of antidepressants and anxiety medications on again, off again, on again, off again. Like honestly, I feel like whatever you need to do to help you get to a better place you need to do that and screw what anybody else thinks or how they feel about it you know because i know that there's such a stigma against being on medication and going to therapy but i know what works for me and i know that i'm better when i'm doing what's right for me the weight situation has always been a big factor when it comes to my anxiety and my depression it wasn't just the pain that was keeping me from going out and enjoying life and making me miss out on events the idea of having to get dressed when i feel super bloated and uncomfortable in my body and going out i didn't want to do it so what do i do i stay home and when I'm home, I'm just overthinking and I feel like crap. It's a cycle. And I've really struggled to bring myself out of it. Definitely had like a huge effect on my confidence and my relationships with the people around me. I like harbored so much anger because I was just so uncomfortable and so angry with who I was and where I was in my life just super unhappy and in turn like took that out 
on the people that I love the most. Oh my God, why am I getting so emotional? If you haven't noticed, like I am the biggest crybaby. Yeah, the effects that it had on like romantic relationship was a lot, but I think the effects that it had on my relationships with like my family and my friends that's even bigger for me to miss out on like my best friend's birthdays for years because i'm super down and depressed and just like cannot be around other people because i'm so worried about how i look and what i'm gonna wear and i hate shopping so much every time i go shopping I get anxious because I'm like, Ugh, n none of this looks good on me. Like I just, it's really, I've been really hard on myself these past few years. I remember walking into my doctor's office, Dr. Boz, the doctor that did my surgery. And when I told him, I was like, yeah, I'm 27. He's like, oh, like you're a baby. And I'm like, I don't feel like a baby. And he's like, well, when you have endometriosis, you grow up way faster than everyone else does because you're dealing with a chronic illness, chronic pain. You're not getting to enjoy life the way that someone your age actually is. And it's so true. I missed out on so much and this is like really crazy to say but when physically you don't feel good that has a huge huge effect on you mentally and I hate to even say this but I understand to a certain extent why people that are in a lot of pain physically would take their lives i i hate to say that but when you feel like your body's just failing you it's devastating and not something that i like to think about too much i just want to talk about my weight again and this is real big for me to share because i'm very like you know when it comes to my weight and as most like people and specifically you know you're not supposed to ask a woman her weight but when i went in on the morning for surgery and they weighed me i was the heaviest i've ever been which was 178 I'm five feet tall. Also, there's this thing that I, I have to talk about that unless you have endo, you probably don't know about this, but there's something called endo belly. I want to post pictures of it. This is going to be hard for me because this is me being really vulnerable, showing pictures of my stomach. Who it's that's not going to be easy, but pretty much some women like look pregnant and it's endo belly your stomach is so inflamed so big hard tender it is the worst pain ever and it's crazy specific times of the month my jeans will not close it's not easy and your clothes were fitting last month and now you put them on and <laughs> them shits won't even zipper up like but it's my endo belly and for real the way that my stomach extends is crazy sometimes and the bloating is out of this world i'm gonna post some pictures so that you can see my endo belly and i'm gonna post some photos of pre and post op so that you can see and that's a big deal for me because this is taking my vulnerability to a whole other level So y'all better be nice. So unfortunately, I don't have any photos of me right before surgery. But this is a photo of me from 2020 where I pretty much was the same weight. Um, and between 2020 and now, I had lost 30 pounds and I gained the 30 pounds back. As you can see, I'm super bloated.
If you're easily grossed out, look away. But this is me three days post-op. Still obviously really swollen. This is me 10 days post-op. And this is me today, three months post-op. And little willow in the background so yeah i've really come a long way my doctor said that i would probably lose around like 10 pounds after because of all the inflammation and i mean i'm three three months post-op now and i lost like 15 pounds at this point so anyone that thinks that endometriosis doesn't have an effect on your weight, I'm here to tell you that it really does. I mean, I'm still not where I want to be physically, but I am definitely working on it. And that, here's another thing. I've tried so many different workouts. I've done cycling. I've done pilates i was going to the gym doing the sauna yoga dancing a lot of cardio hit exercises i've done so many and tried so many different things and just never could find something that i feel really worked for me it's really hard to want to work out when you're so fatigued like, literally sometimes even getting out of bed is so hard not just because you're depressed but because you're so fatigued and then of course the fatigue makes you feel depressed the smallest tasks makes me feel so tired or like i can't do anything else so imagine having to go to work like that feeling like nobody really understands or like people think that i'm being dramatic you know because no one really gets it unless you have it uh you're not gonna understand can you imagine just what it's like to be gaslit by your doctors and like told that oh you know like here i'll just give you this it really baffles me sometimes that doctors could be so like, careless it takes like up to 10 years for a person to be diagnosed with endometriosis which is the case for me so just imagine what it's like for a black woman her pain is often dismissed people think like have a stronger pain threshold than other women it's not acceptable it's not acceptable I've been failed way too many times and I refuse to be failed again. So like I said in the last video, women, especially black women, advocate for yourself. I can't stress enough how important it is to advocate for yourself and just keep on pushing until you find the right doctor that's going to listen and help you get to a point where you can live as pain-free of a life as you possibly can because it's not normal to have extremely painful periods it's not normal to have painful sex it's not normal to miss out on everyday life like work and school and events because of your period like come on it's just it's not normal don't let anybody tell you that it is do what you got to do to make sure that you are heard and that's the thing if you're told uh, over and over and over again that basically it's in your head or that you're crazy you start to think that you are and that's why i think it took so long for me to get to this point and right now i feel amazing i feel great i haven't felt this great in years i feel like i have this like newfound confidence in myself and who i am and the fact that 
I'm even making videos and being vulnerable about taking medication and going to therapy like that is not me to share these things and talk about my weight oh that is not me at all to talk about my weight and how it's affected my confidence and how it's held me back from doing the things that I've wanted to do it's not me but I feel like Actually, it is me. Turns out it is me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to keep on making videos, especially this month, because I just want to create more awareness. I always felt like I was put on this earth to sing. I always felt since I was this big, that has been my thing. That is literally who I am. But as I'm getting older, I'm realizing that there's so much more to it. I know I'm going to do big things. I'm slowly gaining more confidence to do big things. But I think that I'm here to spread awareness and create change for real. So thank you. Thank you for watching. Happy Endometriosis Awareness Month. Be aware, baby.